Hi everybody, Professor Gassimi here, and in this component of the lecture, we will be speaking about the internet's growth and its current usage. So the internet was first developed to actually serve as an intercommunications device between scientific laboratories, uh, but it's come a long way since those very humble and uh, geeky origins. The technology has expanded since the 1960s to now connect billions of users globally. Specifically, the number, as of 2020 at least, was um, about two-thirds of the Earth's population. Um, that's grown a lot, actually, since even the, as early as the mid-90s, where it was less than 1% of the Earth's population. So an incredible rate of growth for the Internet. It's actually interesting, too, that um, even though it's grown so meteorically, that there's still something like a third of the Earth that doesn't use it, right? That's uh, also an interesting opportunity to some extent for, from a growth perspective. Now, the first website that was existed was an online guide actually for creating web pages. That's what I'm showing there on the right-hand side. And the website was only in text because the browsers at that time actually didn't have the capability to manipulate graphics or display images. And so everything was just done in text. As we learn more about HTML, you're going to see some of the remnants of that iterative nature of developing these technologies. Now, the number of websites has really exploded. Uh, it continues to be on this exponential growth curve, as I'm showing on the right-hand side of the screen there. Uh, in the last six years, it's doubled. Uh, and there's roughly 2.7 internet users for every one website that exists, which is sort of crazy, right? You know, One website, three distinct people on the planet Earth. Hopefully, by the time we're done with this class, we're going to push that ratio a little further down because each of you are going to have websites. And we'll continue to chip away at that ratio until it gets uh, closer to one. What I've got here are the top five most visited websites on the planet Earth. And I thought it was interesting that they all have something in common, which is in all of these websites, Google, YouTube, Facebook, Amazon, and Wikipedia, you and I actually create the content, the goods, the knowledge, and so on. And the website provides the computational resources to store, host, and share that information. And so if you want to get into the big tech business, think about indexing. There is a rich amount of activity that happens on the internet. At any given moment, content is being created, it's being communicated, it's being disseminated and shared, and this incredible communication modality. Within 60 seconds, emails are sent, searches are being made, and so on. Uh, consider for a moment the range of tools, uh, text editors, image filters, infrastructure, like computer servers and software, such as cryptographic keys and search algorithms that are needed to support all of the activities that I'm showing you there on the right-hand side. The you know, 204 million emails that, that were sent in 2014, or the uh, four million searches that were happening on Google in that same time, and so on. Now, what comes with supporting all of these incredible plethora of activities, of course, is a growth in data. The types of data being shared over the internet has changed over time, as you can see from the distribution that I'm showing on the right-hand side of the screen there. Uh, a majority of the data being shared relates to internet videos, and it has for you know, at least the last six years or so. And as technology improves and costs reduce and bandwidth uh, increases, we can expect to see more data-heavy applications. In fact, if you look at this right-hand side of the screen, you can see that that uh, tiny little fraction in 2017 of red, which corresponds to the number of exabytes per month, that were used on gaming has, has grown pretty substantially, actually, as a, as a total fraction of the amount of data that's distributed through the internet. And as uh, tools become better at making this, available, this data available in a streaming fashion, I think you're gonna see some of this distribution uh, shift a little bit more, probably in the direction of gaming or maybe some other services that, we've, that we will come to know. So more users are accessing the internet these days through their mobile phones than they are over their desktops. That is to say that the way people access the internet has changed over time. 
If you look at this figure on the uh, top right of the screen, what I've done is I've got a timeline from 2007 through 2015 where we show uh, where were the connections to the internet being made through? What kind of devices? Were they desktop or mobile devices? And you, you can see that right around 2014, mobile overtook uh, desktops and it has only continued to overtake it since then. This change in the internet access points uh, yields changes in the way the internet is used. Um, and it also has important implications for how websites are designed. You're going to see when we speak about HTML and CSS next week that because mobile is this uh, predominant way that people like to access websites now, you actually have to explicitly consider mobile visitors to your website when you're developing your HTML, your CSS, and other sorts of content. So the conclusion for this lecture is that there is uh, a growth for internet usage. There's a lot of opportunity. There, you know, 64 or so percent of the world is online right now. Uh, there is a trend of increasing usage of data-heavy applications such as gaming. And there's a diversity of in internet access points yielding a diversity of internet usage styles and considerations when you want to develop platforms for the web.